Let's just uh, pray together. God, we thank you that you are at work here in 100 Mile House and across the globe. And Lord, you have called this couple, you've called Stan and Sandy to be your servants, to serve you, to go into places that desperately need hope and, and your salvation, Lord. And God, we know that your word is power, your word is truth. And God, you desire for this world to hear your gospel. And God, we just pray for their lives. God, we pray a blessing upon them from our church. We pray that you would protect them, God, as they go into different places. God, we just pray that you would keep open doors for them, Lord, and, and help them, Father, lead them into good paths, God. And thank you that they could come here this morning, Lord, and, and that you've put a message on Stan's heart, and he's going to share with us a little bit of what's happening in their mission. And we just we just love them, Lord, and we just pray that you'd bless them and, and keep them safe. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Stan, I'm going to turn the service over to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of serving you and for the fact that you hold our hand as we walk through this life. We thank you for that, Jesus, and we ask you to hold our hand again in this uh, the rest of this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Luke 7, 36. While I'm reading, does anybody have a glass of, uh, of water or something you could give me? Or a bottle? When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went down to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And a woman at the town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and then she wiped them with her hair, and she kissed them, and she poured perfume on them. And then the Pharisee who invited him, he saw this, and he said to himself, this man were a prophet. He'd know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she's a sinner. And Jesus answered, Simon, I got something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender, and one owed 500 denarii, and another owed 50. And neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? And Simon replied, I suppose the one who had bigger debt forgiven. You judge correctly, Jesus said. And then he turned to the woman, and he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you didn't give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears, and she wiped them with her hair. And you didn't give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, hasn't stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head, but she's poured perfume on my feet. And therefore, I tell you, her many sins are forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Diamond's gone down in history as kind of one of the bad guys. But, you know, in this town, he was one of the good guys. He was big into parties, and he invited people to his parties, and everybody loved coming to his parties because he was such a nice guy. He knew how to talk and make you feel good, and, and uh, he had great sandwiches, and he had know how to cater, um, you know, for the parties that were just the right kind of uh, food. And um, that's... Well, one of the reasons Simon had parties is because he knew he was good at having parties. And he was a smart guy, and he kind of liked to show off how, how witty and how smart he was, and he liked making people laugh. And, and that was one of the reasons he invited Jesus over to this party, probably, was to get another chance to show off to the town how great of a, of a host he could be, right? And so the parties was, 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 was just getting going, and people were were laughing at his jokes, and he was talking in, in, uh, in Greek a little bit, using some of those words, and people were impressed with how, how, how well he spoke. And um, they were thinking, wow, he's really asking some hard questions now to Jesus. Uh, I wonder if Jesus is going to be able to answer that question. He's like one of the Greek philosophers, this uh, Simon fella. And so, so he's, uh, he, he's, he's doing what he does best, and this woman barges in. I don't know what her name is. 
I'm probably good with uh, the, that cup is probably good enough, Clint. One's good enough, thanks. What are we going to call her? We don't have a name for her. Let's call her Mary, okay? Anyway, she just barges in. I, I was told last week that one-third of the ladies in, uh, in uh, Palestine were called Mary at that time. So let's call her Mary. But this is one of those Marys that just barges in. Barges in, and she stops at Jesus' feet. That's as far as she gets. She doesn't even get as far as Simon. And she starts crying, and she starts breaking this, 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 this pot on, on Jesus' feet and, and wiping it with her hair and, and making a big scene. And Simon's just looking at the tattoos in this house. Oh, my. And she realizes that all of a sudden, nobody's ever going to remember anything that he ever said in this party. All they're going to remember is her long hair and the smell of that perfume. And uh, they're just going to remember this incident is going to be what this party is all about. And Simon's just disgusted. Why didn't I tell the doorman to watch out for Mary and make sure she doesn't come into the house? Mary, though, she understood that it wasn't Simon's party. It was Jesus' party. And she understood that the party happened wherever Jesus' feet were. The party was at Jesus' feet. The party's always at Jesus' feet. That's where, that's where the important things happen. That's where it all happens. Another Mary understood this, too. In Luke 10, 36, Jesus and his disciples were on their way, and they came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary. What did she do? She sat at Jesus' feet. Listen to what he said. Martha was distracted by the preparations, and, and she said to him, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're upset and worried about many things, but few things are needed. In fact, just only one, and Mary has chosen the better part, and it won't be taken away from her. Mary understood that the party was at Jesus' feet. Parties. Clint talked about the, your party room downstairs, which had just gotten improvement, hey? And I'm so glad to hear you guys have parties. You can't have parties at churches. Sometimes you have them in halls. Sometimes they're by invitation only. Some people really like parties. There's an elite club of Christians, too, you know. John Piper says there's an elite club, and it's called the Forgiven Much Club. And Mary was in the club. A couple of tax collectors were in the club, too. One of them was pretty short. And you hear about him in, in, in Luke. And Jesus entered Jericho, and he was passing through. And the man, Zacchaeus, he was a wealthy tax collector. He wanted to see Jesus, but he was short, and he couldn't see above the crowd. So he ran ahead, and he climbed a sycamore tree because Jesus was coming his way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to stay in your house today. And so he came down and welcomed them gladly. But the people began to mutter, he's gone to the guest's house of a sinner. And Jesus stood up and said, Lord, I'm going to give half my possessions to the poor. If I cheated anybody, I'm going to pay him back four times the amount. And Jesus said, salvation's come to this house because this man's the son of Abraham. The son of man came to save and seek that what was lost. Tax collector number two, Luke 18 10, two men went up to the temple to pray. One of them, a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee stood by himself and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like the other people, robbers, evildoers, murderers, or like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. And the tax collector, he stood at a distance, and he wouldn't even look up to heaven. He beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, sinner. And I tell you that this man, rather than the former, went home justified before God for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. One hardcore criminal was in that elite club. In Luke 23, 39, one of the criminals hung on the cross, hurled insults at Jesus and said, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other criminal said, Don't you fear God since you're under the same sentence? We're punished justly. We're getting what we deserve. This man, he's done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him and said, Truly today I tell you, you'll be with me in paradise. He made it in to the Forgiven Much Club. It's the last hours 
of his life. I go to a lot of churches and I preach, and uh, I usually sit right where Sandy is sitting now, the second row from the, the front, where I was sitting. And I, I had a good, it was a good decision today because I sat right in front of these, these cute kids here in the front. And they were a little distracting with their bows and all that, but they were cute looking around, and, and, and I had that uh, nice experience today. Uh, but a few years ago, I did the same thing, sat in the, in the second row, and the guy sat in front of me, and I thought, man, this is a bad, bad place for me to sit, because he too was distracting, but not in a way that was uh, nice, but he was annoying me. He was just jerking around and looking around all the time and clapping way too loud and, and looking at people, and I thought, Oh, I'm just gonna keep my eyes closed. Or why didn't I sit over there where I didn't have to see that guy? He's just distracting me. And then the pastor said, "Anybody have any prayer requests?" And he jumped up and he put his head on the on the altar here and he said, "Te necesito, Jesús. Te necesito, Jesús." It was a Spanish church. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. And God spoke to me and said, "Do you need me like He needs me?" And after service, he just ran up to me. And he, he told me about his life. He said, I was on the streets of Hastings and Maine for 10 years. I couldn't leave that little area because that's where my drugs were. He said, I'd be dead if it wasn't for Jesus. Jesus saved me. And he's just smiling. And I thought to myself, yeah, he's in the forgiven much club. Paul served the Lord for many, many years. And God took him through valleys and mountains. And God changed his life and changed his heart. And he became a, a powerful leader that everybody looked up to as, a, as a, someone to follow. And a saint walked for the Lord, walked with the Lord for years and years and years. And near the end of his life, and he writes to Timothy, and he says in 1 Timothy 1.15, Remember, Jesus Christ came to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. So what Paul's saying is that I'm still in the club too. I'm in the forgiven much club. And I love much. I love Jesus so much. He's forgiven me so much. But not Simon. He didn't even want to be associated with those people. He thought he should hang around with the people who've been forgiven maybe a little bit. Just a little bit. Didn't need that much forgiveness. Mary, she couldn't help herself. The whole town knew. They were looking at her tattoos, and they could tell that she needed a lot of forgiving. And she wasn't ashamed of it. She was telling everybody what Jesus had done for her, how he had saved her. There's no way I can deny it. I'm in the club. I'm in the forgiven much club. And so she just took the most valuable thing she had in her house, that perfume that she was saving for her death, and she poured it out on Jesus' feet, and she was singing. The song went something like this. I'm so glad I'm yours, Lord. So glad I'm yours. So glad your mercies have followed me. So glad you found me and set me free. And 
the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I'd harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortune turned to loss. So I wrapped it all up in the rags of my life, and I laid them at your feet. And you know what happened? Jesus, something beautiful. Sing it with me. That's my story, too. I want to be in that club. I want to be in the Forgiven Much Club, the same club that you're in. And you know, when I think of where I'd be, if Jesus just hadn't had mercy on me, where my addictions would have led me, where my hatred, my bitterness, my personality, man, if it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be the worst. I'd be on that cross. Me too, Mary. Me too. I'm in the Forgiven Much Club, and all I can do is the same thing that Mary did. Just get as far as Jesus' feet and stop there and start saying, thank you, Jesus. Weeping in gratitude because I've been forgiven much, and so I love much. That's what Jesus wants. He wants us to love him much, and I love him so much. Me too, Mary. I'm in the Forgiven Much Club. I, <laughs> yeah. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm going to close with a song that I learned. Uh, this is the first time I heard it, actually, was my, my folks. My dad just passed away last month, and he used to go every week to a teen challenge group in Yarrow, in, in Chilliwack area. And uh, I went there with him a couple times. And there's a group of, of men sitting around there, and they were uh, men who, who just lost everything. They were in a you know, like a group home, you know, the, the welfare would just go straight to the teen challenge thing, and, and they couldn't hold down a job, they lost their families, and they were, they were singing this song, and, and, and they were singing it from their toes, so, so mean, they meant it, and I thought to myself, every single one of these guys are obviously at the club, this is what they're singing, I've been hailed by my Savior, I felt fire from above I've been down to the river And I ain't the same The prodigal has returned All my hope is in Jesus Thank God that yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven I've been washed by the blood I'm no stranger to prison I've worn shackles and chains But I've been freed and forgiven I ain't going back, I'll never be the same I sing all my hope is in Jesus Thank God that yesterday been washed by the blood. Sing it with me. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Forgiven much. Hallelujah. That's my story.
Thank you, Stan. What a wonderful message. Maybe you're here today and you feel like you need a fresh touch from God. Maybe you're here today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus before. Maybe you feel like you're the one that's wandered afar off and you just need the master. You need to come to Jesus' feet. Well, today we're going to pray and I'm going to dismiss the service. And uh, I understand that we have a picnic out back for those who come prepared to picnic together every second week during the summer. We've been just having this casual picnic lunch out back in the field there. So you're welcome to join us, even if you want to go down and grab a sandwich. But the food that we have that's most important is the food that comes from God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this morning I, I believe that God is calling calling to you. You know, are you in the Much Forgiven Club? I know that I am. Where would we be without God's grace? If you're here today and you're struggling, maybe you don't know where you're going, you don't know where you're at, but you just know that you need Jesus and you want Jesus to touch your life. Um, we're going to close in prayer and if that's you today and you just want somebody to pray with you, I'm going to ask that you come and uh, receive prayer and, and our board, if you could just keep an eye out and come if there's anybody that needs prayer and stand if you wouldn't mind praying with them too. And, um, we're just going to bow this, uh, this day uh, before the Lord. And Wasn't it great to hear what God's doing in Indonesia and in the lives of others and, and what he wants to do in everybody's life? Isn't that awesome? Let's, let's bow in prayer and thank the Lord. Jesus, we thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross for us so that we could have life. We thank you for forgiveness, God. Father, you've, you've reached to, out to us with your grace. And you said, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And Lord, you've given us rest. God, sometimes the journey of life can be difficult, and there's folks here this morning that are carrying great burdens. And we just pray, Lord, that like that lady that came into Simon the Pharisee's house, that Lady Mary, Father, that we would come before you and just fall before your feet, Lord, and give you all that we are and all that we have. For God, if we do that, Lord, you promise not to turn us away. Father, you, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus, and we just praise you this morning. God, we pray for, for each person here today that as they go out this week and finish off the summer, Lord, whatever they're doing this week, God, that your grace and peace would rest upon your people in abundance. And we just praise you, God, for your wonder, for your miracles, and for loving us, God, so deeply. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in his presence. And again, if you're here and you need prayer, I'm just going to slip into the back prayer room and maybe ask a couple of people to come with me. And if you need prayer, come on back and we'll, we'll pray. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.